This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 2, number 101. So here we're given y is equal to 2 over x, and we have a region from 4 to 6, okay? So this problem, we're going to be looking for the area between this region. I think they forgot to say it, but we're going to be looking for the area under y, between y and our x-axis, between 4 and 6, okay? So let me just draw a quick rough sketch. So you can use your calculator to do this, right? The rough sketch, very rough. So it's basically going to look similar to 1 over x, but we know that um, 1 over x is the parent graph, and we're multiplying it by 2, so we're vertically stretching it by 2. Okay, and we're going from 4 to 6. So we're looking for this area in between 4 and 6, okay? That is what we're looking for. So let's go on to part A. Part A says, divide the interval into five equal pieces. What is the width of each of these pieces or each rectangle? So again, if I have, the, this is my four here and this is six. In between, I have five, right? Well, we know the width can be found simply by the formula B minus A over N, where our region here, we find six is our ending. So that's B, four is our start. So that's A. N is going to be the number of pieces, 5. Okay? So let's go ahead and plug those values in. 6 minus 4 over 5. That's equal to 2 fifths. Right? Plug that in your calculator. That's equal to 0 0.4. Okay? So again, what is the width of each rectangle? 0 0.4. All right. Part B says to find X sub 0, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, okay? <clears throat> well, we know we start at 4, and each rectangle or width is going to be 0. 0.4. So our next one's going to be x1 is going to be 4 plus 0. 0.4, which is 4.4, okay? Our next segment is going to be 0.4 later than the one before, so it's 4.4 plus 0 0.4, or 4.8, okay? Then we have 4.8 plus 0 0.4, that's 5.2, right? X sub 4 is the one before, plus 0.4, the width of each one. 5.2 plus 0 0.4 is 5.6, and finally, x sub 5, right, we're finding 0 through 5, is equal to 5.6 plus 0 0.4 is equal to 6. All right, and that's exactly what we want it to look like, starting at 4 and stopping at 6. Okay? So these are the widths. I mean, not the widths. These are all of our x sub x's. Part C. <clears throat> Use five rectangles to get upper and lower bounds for the area under the curve. Okay, so that tells me we're going to be doing this twice. All right. So let's look at the region. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the region just from four to five, right? I mean, four to six, excuse me. Let's scroll back up here and look at our graph. So from 4 to 6, we know that the graph it looks like that. So we know it looks something like this. This is um, still a sketch, right? It looks something like this from 4 to 6. And <clears throat> we want to find, find the area between 4 and 6, right? So let's go ahead and plug all the points in between. We have 4, 4.4. So this is 5 here, right in the middle. We have x sub 0 is 4. x1 is 4.4. x sub 2 is 4.8. Right? Maybe I drew it a little too, more like there. x sub 3 is 5.2. Right? X sub 4 is 5.6. Maybe right there. And X sub 5 is 6. Okay? So let me draw them in green so you can see this is 
x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, this is our x sub 5. All right? So we want to use five rectangles to get upper and lower bounds for the area under the curve. So remember to do this. Um, one was going to be left and point rectangles, right? And how many do we have? Five. Okay, so this one's going to be using five left point rectangles. Okay, so my end point's going to be using the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and this is going to extend up. Let me use a different color. Right, so the height of this rectangle uses the left side. The height of this one is going to use the left side. The height of this one is going to use the left side. Again, the left side and the left side. All right. <clears throat> and is this going to be an over or an underestimate? Okay. This one we can see right away we're going to be getting more area than is actually under our curve. So this is going to be an overestimate, right? Overestimate. So that means over means it's an upper bound. Upper bound. Okay? It just over means upper bound. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> we know that five left point and point rectangles is going to allow us to approximate the area under the curve. Right, it's going to be basically the base times every height, right? So what is the height? Okay, so let's go ahead and find that. We know that the height here, using the formula for a curve, let's write that too. The formula, remember, is y is equal to 2 over x. Let's remind us right here. y is equal to 2 over x. So y is equal to 2 over x. Okay, so this point right here is going to be 4, comma, 2 over 4, which is simplified to be 1 half. This one's going to be 4.4, 4, comma, 2, right, this point right here is 4.4, 4, comma, 2 over 4.4. 4. This point here is going to be 4.8, comma, 2 over 4.8, right? This point here is going to be 5.2, comma, 4, 2 over 5.2. This point here is going to be 5.6, comma, 2 over 5.6, right? And we don't get this point here because we're doing the left endpoints right now, right? Left endpoints. So that gives us all the heights. So let's go ahead and write this out. We know that the area then is going to be the base times the height of this rectangle, right? Which is going to be the base is the width. And we found the width earlier is 0.4, right? The width is 0.4. So 0.4 times the height. So the height is 2 over 4, right? We're getting the height from this length right here, plus 0.4 times, again, the height for this rectangle right here is going to be 2 over 4.4. And how many of these are we going to have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different rectangles. So plus, let's write it up here, 0 0.4 times the height of this one is 2 over 4.8 plus 0 0.4, the height of this one is 2 over 5.2. Plus, again, our last rectangle is going to give us the area 0.4 times 2 over 5.6. All right. Again, this was from the left endpoint, which is going to be an overestimate or an upper bound. All right. So let's go ahead and plug these into our calculators. So bring out your calculator. You should go ahead and do this so um, when it's time to do it all on your own, you're able to 
um, entered in, and if you can't get the same answer, we should talk. Okay, so 0. 0.4 times 2 over 4. And I'm able to do this without parentheses because multiplication and division happens in any order, plus, and they happen before addition, right? 0. 0.4 times. Okay, before I continue, what am I going to be doing every with every term? I'm going to be multiplying it by 0. 0.4, right? So let me do something a little smart and factor out a 0.4 from all of these terms. And I'm left with 2 over 4 from this term plus 2 over 4.4 plus 2 over 4.8 plus 2 over 5.2 plus 2 over 5.6. Okay, so that's going to allow me, let's delete all of these. Right, I'm going to be able to, then I'm going to put in parentheses 2 over 4 plus 2 over 4.4. It's going to allow me to do less typing in my calculator. 2 over 4.8 plus 2 over 5.2 plus 2 over 5.6. Oops, 5.6. Right. Let's go ahead and check it. 2 over 4, 2 over 4.4, 2 over 4.8, 2 over 5.2, 2 over 5.6 equals. All right, so this area gives us 0. Point. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a lot of digits because um, I don't want to approximate too early because later on I'm going to be using the upper and I want to compare it with the lower bound. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and write all the digits. 0.845188.1452, area is units squared. Okay, so we were able to get the upper bound for the area under the curve. How can we get the lower bound? Well, if you look at the curve, I'm going to use orange for the lower bound. Um, if I use five right endpoint, rectangles. Okay, so if I use five right endpoint rectangles, I'm going to be creating the rectangle using the right side, right? Right here, the right side, right here, the right side. Okay, you see how we're using the right side now? Oops. All right, and it's going to be an underestimate Right, because we are not capturing all of the area, we're going underneath the curve with every rectangle, so that's going to be our lower bound. Okay, so what is the area going to be now? Well, we have this point, right? We have this point, we have this point, we have this point. Well, what is this one point we need to know? Um, I'm gonna use blue so it's darker here. It's gonna be six comma and the equation is 2 over x, and x is 6, so it's 2 over 6, okay? So my area is going to be, for this rectangle, the base we know is 0.4. The height now is going to be the height from this point, which is 2 over 4.4, plus 0 0.4 times 2 over, remember the height now is from this point, which is 4.8, plus 0.4, and the next one is going to be, the height. this height is 2 over 5.2, plus 0.4 times 2 over 5.6, right? It's from this one. And finally, the height of our fifth rectangle is going to be the base here, and the height is 2 over 6, okay? So again, we're going to be able to write that Let's factor out the 0.4. We have 2 over 4.4 plus point. Nope, let's undo that. Plus, right, I'm factoring it out, so it's 2 over 4.8 plus 2 over 5.2 plus 2 over 5.6 plus 2 over 6, right? So what is the area I get? Let's bring out our calculators. I'm going to do second entry to get that one because the only changes I'm going to delete 
The first one is no longer 2 over 4, it's 2 over 4.4. And then it's 2 over 4.8, 2 over 5.2, 2 over 5.6, right? These are all the same here. And we have one last one, 2 over 6, plus 2 over 6. Close that parentheses. Check yours. Make sure you can enter this in and get a lower bound of 0 0.778521. Four seven eight five units squared. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at and make sure we answered the question. We used five rectangles to get upper bound. Yes, that was here. And we used five rec rectangles to get a lower bound. The lower was down here, and we got the area using both of those. Here is one. And here is the other one. Okay. So let's go on to part D. What minor change, so minor means small, like not a big change. What minor change could you make in part A? So let's go look at part A. To make the upper and lower bounds closer together. So let's go ahead and look at part A. What do we do in part A? Part A was we divided the interval into five equal pieces. What is the width of each rectangle? So I guess instead of dividing it, I mean, we have the interval. Okay, that's kind of stuck. Um, five equal pieces. So I think that what this question is, going, is trying to ask us is, how can we go ahead and get um, our answers from the left endpoint and the right endpoint equal to each other or more alike? Well, if they both got closer to the actual area, right? These are both kind of far away. In the middle somewhere is the actual area. Um, that maybe we could look at the average. But what change can we make? Instead of breaking it up into five equal pieces, we could break it up into lots more pieces right because if we do more pieces more rectangles right if our n is not five let's say n is 10 right we double it this is going to be closer to the actual area so it's going to be closer to um the actual area is probably around 0.8 right this one's going to be closer to the actual area too this one's going to get smaller that way this one's going to get bigger that way they're both going to get much closer to the actual area and therefore closer to each other. So if n is equal to 10, if n is equal to 100, if n is equal to 1000, right? That might take a long time for us to calculate, but the bigger the n is, the bigger the number of rectangles. So basically increase number of rectangles. Then the closer our approximate answers are going to get to the actual area, and therefore, they will get closer to each other as well. Okay? So that is the end of CPM Precalculus Chapter 2, number 101.